What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be breaking down Scope Glint in Modern Warfare 2 because it's actually quite a bit more complex than we've seen in recent years of Call of Duty. And we're just going to dive right into this here. If you guys have scrolled through the optics section and paid attention to the pros and cons, you'll notice that there are different types of scope glint depending on the optic that you're using. Usually it's tied pretty directly to the zoom level of that optic, but you'll see with some they have very small glint, then we have small, medium, large, and very large glint. And I just wanted to go through and show you guys the differences between these to see just how much you're giving away by using these various optics and aiming in the direction of enemy players. And before we go through each individual level of glint, let's cover the basics of glint in general that applies to all of these optics that have scope glint on them. And in this game, we actually get scope glint on basically every optic that isn't some form of like a holographic or reflex sight. Basically any optic that's got some extra magnification within the glass itself, this is going to be giving off scope glint, unlike Modern Warfare 2019. Additionally, this is probably obvious to most of you, but I want to point it out. This scope glint will only appear to other players when you're aiming down sight in their direction. If you're not aiming down sight, there is literally zero glint coming off your gun, so you don't have to worry about that. Also, you might be wondering about the hybrid optics that have scope glint stated as their cons, because with these ones, the high zoom version of that is a high enough zoom to give you scope glint, but what happens if you swap over to the reflex sight that's attached to that optic? Does that suddenly make your scope glint go away, so then you can choose when to show your scope glint and when not to by toggling that optic? Well, I was actually very surprised to see here that scope glint is present regardless of which one of the optics you're using on that hybrid optic. So even if you do swap over to that reflex sight, you're giving off the exact same scope glint as when you're using the higher zoom version of that same optic. As for the next thing with scope glint, this is how close you have to be aiming in the direction of your enemy for them to see that scope glint. Do you have to be aiming like right on target essentially, or can you be aiming a bit to the left or to the right of that target and they can still see your scope glint? And I was actually quite surprised to find in my testing that no matter which scope glint level you choose, this cone is the same for all of them, and it appears to be projected at a total angle of 25 degrees or 12 and a half degrees to each side. So if you have an enemy centered at zero, we'll say, as long as you're aiming within 12 and a half degrees to the left or to the right of that target, they will be able to see your scope glint, although it does start to fade as you get to the outer edges of that 12 and a half degrees. However, anything beyond 12 and a half degrees off targets and they won't be able to see you. And you can use the compass to track this if you want. Obviously in a real game situation, that's not really gonna be practical for you, but that's how I was able to test this in custom games at least. And then finally, I wanted to mention there is a close range cutoff for the glint and that appears to be five meters. So within five meters, regardless of the glint level of your optic, if you're aiming at an enemy player, they won't be able to see that glint. But obviously within five meters, it's not like they need glint to figure out that you're standing right in front of them. And with those basics out of the way, let's get into the individual scope glint levels so we can compare them side by side and see their differences in ranges as well as visibility. And we're going to start this off with the very small scope glint. And this applies to optics like the VLK4X, for instance, very popular optic. I really like this optic if I am looking for that little bit of extra zoom without getting too crazy. And as we can see here, up close and personal, you can definitely see some scope glint there. And in a dark environment, for instance, yeah, this, this may alert you to the fact that that enemy is there when you otherwise wouldn't have seen them. But at the same time, this isn't going to be like incredibly eye-catching. It's not like it's taken up your whole screen or anything. It's just something that is going to help you see that target a bit more effectively. What you'll notice though is as that target continues to back off, this fades away pretty quickly and it turns out the maximum threshold for this is 38 meters. If that target is 38 meters away from you and you're not aiming down sight at that target, especially with an optic, there is literally zero glint present at all when they're using an optic with very small glint. Having said that though, that's if you're not aiming down sight at the target. If you aim down sight at that target, especially if you have an optic with some zoom level to it, you will be able to see that scope glint beyond 38 meters. So that threshold that I'm pointing out here is just when you're not aiming down sight. So if you're running around the map, you're not gonna see somebody at 40 meters with this type of an optic aiming down sight at you. You're not gonna see that optic. But if you pop a two times sight on there, for instance, then that effectively doubles the range at which you're able to see that very small scope glint. So you'll see them now at about 76 meters as long as you're aiming down sight in their direction. 
So that's the first one. That's the very small scope glint. And you can see it's fairly limited there. Honestly, I don't think this is really going to prevent me from using a VLK4X, for instance. It's not putting you at that much of a disadvantage, but there may be the odd situation here or there where somebody picks you out that they otherwise wouldn't have noticed. Next, let's have a look at the small scope glint. And you can see it's definitely a bit brighter here. Don't worry, we'll do a side by side by side comparison toward the end of the video. But you should be able to immediately tell that it is brighter than the very small glint and it doesn't fade away nearly as fast as that target backs away from me here. And it's also worth noting our maximum threshold here, again, while not aiming down sight in their direction, is around 70 meters. It's more like 68, 69 meters, somewhere in that range. But just to simplify things, we'll round that up to about 70 meters. And beyond that, you won't be giving off any scope glint at all. So that's something you may want to take advantage of. Maybe if you're trying to snipe people, but you don't want to be giving off a lot of glint, but you also don't want to just be using like a reflex sight, for instance. This could be an excellent option for you to counter snipe effectively because you won't be giving off that glint for those long, long range shots. After that one, we have the medium glint optics. And honestly, this doesn't look too much different from the small glint optics when we're looking at the total brightness and size of that glint, although it is a little bit bigger. And I was quite surprised to see that our range is basically the same as small. Honestly, there's not that much of a difference between medium and small at all. It's hardly even noticeable. But technically speaking, that medium glint should be just a little bit more visible than the small glint. After that, of course, we've got large, and this one definitely is a noticeable step up from the medium scope glint. You can see it's got a lot more of a strobing effect, like it's really bright, and this is something you're just not gonna miss if somebody's aiming in your general direction. It's also a much larger glint effect that you're seeing here. And another big thing to point out here is in any of these 6v6 maps, which is all we have access to in custom games for me to test this properly in a controlled environment, I can't find a line of sight long enough to where this glint no longer appears. And I did get a line of sight up to over 130 meters. So it's at least 130 meters. You're going to be seeing that glint, no problem. I wish I could test this properly on like battle maps or something, but in the game's current state, I can't seem to get two accounts together in a public match on opposite teams. I've tried quite a bit here and there's just some technical issues that prevent that. So I really wish I could test this better for you guys in a controlled environment, but just know when you go from medium to large when it comes to scope glint, this is where you're going to see a massive jump in the range at which enemy players are able to see that scope glint without even having to aim down sight in your direction. It's also worth noting, based on my testing, it appears the default optics on all of the sniper rifles have large scope glint. So this is the scope glint you will be seeing if you don't select a different optic. But finally, let's have a look at extra large scope glint. And as you can see up close here, this is another big jump up, even from the large scope glint. This is a big jump when it comes to the amount of glint. This is covering like almost the entire screen up close. And then even at extremely long ranges, again, around 130 meters or so, you're able to see that scope glint, no problem. It's quite bright. You're going to be able to pick that out even if you're not aiming down sight toward that enemy player. Again, in the game's current state, I'm unfortunately unable to test the maximum range threshold of this glint. If I am able to get this properly tested at some point down the road, I will be sure to leave that in a pinned comment down below. But there we have it. Those are all the different scope glint levels. Now let's look at a direct side by side by side comparison here. And first we're gonna start this at the five meter threshold where that glint first starts to appear at point blank ranges. And as we can see here, the very small glint is very noticeably smaller than all of these. Then when it comes to small and medium, honestly, they're very, very similar. They're nearly identical. So there's not much of a jump between small and medium. And the same story goes with the ranges of these. After that, for the large glint, it is noticeably brighter and a little bit bigger than the medium and small glint. And then finally, that extra large glint is just insane. That is super, super bright and impossible to miss. Now, of course, scope glint doesn't really come into play that much at five meters. I just wanted to show you sort of the maximum amount of that glint. Let's instead have a look at what this glint looks like at 50 meters. And I did zoom in a little bit here, but this is without me aiming down sight toward the target. And of course, with the very small glint, there is no scope glint beyond 38 meters, so you're not going to see it at all in this picture. With small and medium, both of them, again, appear to be essentially identical here. So there's really not much of a difference, if any at all, between small and medium. And in terms of my optic selection, I'm going to treat these as equals when I'm selecting optics in the future. Whereas large is a noticeable jump up for medium, and then again, that extra large is so insane that you can hardly even see the character model because it's basically completely covered by that glint. 
And with that, that's going to wrap it up today's video on the scope glints in Modern Warfare 2, as well as a comparison of the different scope glint levels. And I really hope you guys were able to learn something useful here in order to help you make better decisions when it comes to your optic selections. Personally, I really like the fact that they've taken this scope glint mechanic to the next level and they have created these different levels of scope glint depending on the zoom of your optic because I don't think a lower zoom optic should give you the same amount of glint as a super high zoom optic. But that is just my opinion on this and I'd love to hear what you guys think in those comments down below. Are you happy with the current state of glint in the game? And do you like the fact that they have separated scope glints so there's different levels of that depending on the magnification? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.